was hoping the little calf would come up. We got a new calf, folks. There she is. We got a brown cow. I don't know. He uh, he has all these. Uh, this is my neighbor. He uh, he brings all these cows over here. I rent the pasture to him, and he's got black Angus. He's got one uh, Charlay right here, a white one, off white, and then these brown ones. I don't know if they're like a brown Angus or what they are. But anyway, she's a new one. I don't know. I've, I've never seen her before. And she just had a calf here. It's not even a, about a week old calf. So there you go, folks. All right. <clears throat> Let's see here. Let's flip you around. Yep, we're back at the shop here. We're back in Texas. So, uh, uh, walk over here and sit down and catch up with everybody. Everybody got the comments going. All right. Oh, there's the old girl sitting over there. Probably ought to go over and start her up, make sure the batteries are still up. So. Somebody asked me to quit trucking, sort of. <laughs> not not 100% yet, but uh, I haven't sold the truck yet. But uh, that's something probably not too far in the future. Uh, probably gonna go ahead and sell the thing and get out of trucking all, you know, the, the big rig trucking. Uh, the, oh, the job up there in Wisconsin worked out real well. I'm real happy with that. So, uh -oh. <laughs> oh Lord. Uh. So anyway, let's see here. What was it? Um, packing my, my pipe. I finally got my pipe. I left my pipe here at home when I went on that trip and didn't have a pipe to smoke. So I was smoking cigars, cigars. So we'll get to talking here in a minute. Let me get this all packed up. There's 5G. Five bars, five G, whatever. One, two, three, four bars. Four bars of five G. Why it's buffering? I have no idea. What latency or whatever it's called? I have no idea. So, all right, I'm back. I guess this is so much better than a cigar. All right, folks, we are back in Texas, and. Uh, Oh, mercy. Um, uh, went up to Wisconsin and did that deal up there. Uh, it was gonna be a 15 day, um, a 15 day um, event. It was gonna be a 15 day event and uh, I was gonna, uh, Monday we went over and picked up a pickup from Enterprise, uh, rented, rented a pickup. They, they didn't have enough trucks for what, all the different shows they had going on. So they rented me a pickup, and it was a uh, F-350 Dually uh, diesel, 6.7 diesel, 10-speed transmission. I like that. So anyway, uh, it was an XLT. It wasn't the fanciest one, but it wasn't just a... Tell them, should I answer that? Uh. Anyway... Um, uh, so we rented that, and I hooked onto a trader. It was a medical trader, a medical... Uh, what do you call it? A uh, uh, mobile medical clinic, mobile medical clinic, and it's designed to be able to go to go to a parking lot and set up some kind of a medical system, set up you know, uh, COVID shots, things like that, uh, flu shots. Uh, you can do other things. I mean, you can put a dentist in there. He, he can check your teeth out. Probably wouldn't do a whole lot of work, but check to make an appointment to come in. Whatever. Uh, vision, I get a, a vision doctor. And the idea behind that whole thing was uh, <clears throat> it was an insurance company called Molina, Molina Insurance, and Mo Molina Healthcare, okay? And it was a, um, 
I, I was really hoping I'd be able to show some of that stuff on video and everything, but right when I got up there, they, they said, well, part of it is uh, we don't want all this stuff out on social media because the customers want that privacy until they decide to um, uh, release it to the, uh, to the public. Uh, they don't want they want to be able to you know pull the curtain back, you know kind of thing So I wasn't allowed to show anything um, When I had the, the the wheel fell off problem out in Albuquerque uh, You could tell the colors of the trailer because it was reflecting. I didn't know it. It was reflecting off the tanker that was right beside me the, the, the uh, chemical tanker uh, or whatever kind of tanker that was <clears throat> and uh, Stainless steel tanker. Let's put it that way. And you could, if you did a little research, you could figure out it was from Molina and everything. Well, that that's, you know, no problem there. They have a website showing these trailers, you know. Not in detail, but, you know, you can go to Molina's website and see some of these trailers that are sitting there. And I just didn't want to, my very first job, to throw something up on YouTube and then they see it and go, wait a minute, you were supposed to show that, you know, you're fired. You know, so I just didn't want to push that. So, uh, didn't show much of anything on the actual run, the tour. What happened was it was supposed to be 15 days <clears throat> for me. I had another guy, you know, he, he drove the RV, I drove the pickup. Uh, the pickup with the trailer and everything needed to be CDL qualified and logbook and the whole nine yards, uh, pull into scales, you know, that kind of thing. The, the, the 20, 23,700 pound truck and trailer. That had to be CDL'd, but the 21,000 pound RV didn't. It had a class C driver's license fine for it. It just, the rules don't make any sense. So anyway, uh, he didn't have to have any of that. He had a class C driver's license and that worked for him. And he, that's why he drove the RV and I drove the pickup, which I would rather drove the pickup anyway. So anyway, we went out there, as you know, we got out to Albuquerque and the, the uh, studs, the lug studs, uh, the lug nut studs on the wheel had snapped. Uh, either they torqued them down too tight or didn't torque them tight enough. We're, it's still up in debate what happened there. But anyway, all eight lug nuts broke and the wheel fell off. And uh, we had to stop her in Albuquerque and get that fixed. They come out and put a new hub on it and a whole nine yards. And uh, that got us to, that, to the, the show in Phoenix because I was going to leave Milwaukee, go down to Phoenix for a uh, uh, convention type show. Uh, it was a, a medical convention and it wasn't open to the public. You had to be invited to it. I mean, uh, they didn't want a whole bunch of just people walking around looking at stuff when they're not going to buy anything. It was a convention where they had they had a, a pro presentations and you know t you know these huge TV screens and. Um, the, each, each, there were several different companies trying to show what they could build as far as the trailers and stuff. And they did these presentations to the prospective customers. So that's what that was. And so while they were doing that, I went out to Joe's house and uh, farted around out there. And we went out to that dam and, and uh, did whatever. I was out there with him for about three days. On uh, Tuesday, we came back and hooked everything up. Well, the owner was out there and he decided uh, the RV was going out to California and uh, I would turn around and go back to Wisconsin with the trailer so they could repair it and do some, he wasn't satisfied with the fit and finish on a few things. So he, he wanted to go back so he could repair, you know, change and fix that. And uh, so I drove it all the way back to Milwaukee uh, and I got up there on a Friday morning and they looked at it and said, we need a couple of days to fix this. Okay, so a couple of days to fix it. And we they went to, uh, uh, I said, well, it's Labor Day weekend. So it'll be Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Do you mind sticking around for that? I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll go find something to do. So I went up to Mil uh, up to the uh, Michigan's UP, Upper Peninsula. I was up there for five, four days, basically, five days or something like that. I did all these videos that I've been putting out. I did all those, I, I did one, uh, one day, I, I think I did four videos one day, you know, so. Uh, and putting them out, one video on Monday and one video on Thursday, that's two weeks worth of videos, you know. So uh, I've been putting those out slowly and I still got three more to go. Uh, there's three more. The one's coming out next Monday, next Thursday, and then the following Monday. And then after that, it'll be just these live streams working on the bus. So uh, I haven't really done anything since I got home. I got home Sunday night 
uh, oh, uh, back to the, the tour. Uh, went to, uh, so I fired around for a few days up in the UP up there and uh, came back on uh, Wednesday. On Thursday, about 10 o'clock, they said, okay, here it is, all done. I hooked onto it and drug it out to LA. Drug it out to LA, dropped it off, and Bob tailed the pickup all the way back to Milwaukee to turn it back into the Enterprise. So I actually was there for 28 days. Now out of that 28 days, I got paid for 22 of them. Instead of 16 days, I got paid for 22. Cool, you know. Uh, 23 of them. No, 23. Yep. Anyway, so that all worked. I didn't get paid for the days I went to Milwaukee, uh, up to the UP. Of course, I wasn't working, so I don't expect to get paid. So anyway, uh, that that was all good. Everything worked out well. Um, the good people, uh, nice nice uh, work environment and all that, I think. And uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to the next to the next tour, which will probably be next spring sometime. So I'm going to be off for the rest of the winter. Uh, the rest of the year, I'm going to be working on the bus and um, making a decision on what to do with that truck. Should I go ahead and sell it or not? So uh, I'm still 50-50 on that. And the main reason is right now the truck market is going crazy, absolutely crazy. And I bet I could sell that truck for... 120 at least 100 110 maybe somewhere around in there and uh just what the market is right now it's just it's through the roof because they're not making any trucks so very few trucks are being built right now because of that chip shortage now they're working on that and they're making a few trucks but not enough for what the industry wants and from what i can tell every time i see trucks going down the road they're fleet trucks they're going to these big mega fleets they get priority because they buy a thousand trucks a year kind of thing, you know? So uh, I suppose there's a few owner operator trucks, but not many. And for what, for the, for the need for the, all the people, the, the companies and the small and independent operators, people that want to buy a new truck, uh, there's just not enough out there. So it's a supply and demand thing. And right now the, the supply is really low. So the demand is really high. So that thing is worth a chunk of change. So my idea is I've got to go ahead and sell the thing money in the bank I didn't wait maybe two or three years down the road the the, the, the everything kind of changes and uh, uh, prices come back down or uh, I come up with a, a new idea hey man well, I'll go to buy buy this kind of truck and do this kind of different kind of trucking or whatever so I don't know well uh, you know it's uh, that, that there's I don't there's no love that 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 truck over there that that, that Peterbilt it I never got attached to vehicles. Oh no, that's my pride and joy. I've got to keep that forever. It's just a machine to me, okay? It's a, I like it. It's a nice machine. It's a comfortable machine. Uh, but it's just a machine. And I, when, when the values are other way, I just look at it like a stock. Uh, if the stock, the prices are up, sell. The prices are low, buy. So right now the prices are up. So why not sell it? Go play with this thing for a while. And maybe I'll do this for six months or a year and eh, that ain't as much fun as I thought it'd be. Come back, park it, go buy another truck. I, I don't know. I mean, it's that's in the future. You just never know what's going to happen. But right now, like they say, strike while the iron's hot. Right now, the iron is hot. The market is hot as hell right now. So sell it and put that money in the, in the bank. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. I haven't made this 100% decision yet. But yeah, anyway, uh, so that's that. So anyway, I went out to California, came back, dropped that truck off, and uh, uh, came home. I sw swung by Kansas City, saw my sister. Uh, my mom and dad came up and kind of had a little, not a family reunion, just a little get-together, you know. Um, uh, it's been a long time since all of us were together. We all took a picture together. My mom, my dad, me, my sisters, you know, all of us together taking a picture with all the grandkids and great-grandkids and all that kind of stuff. So um, that was a, a photo op, you know, for that, for, for my sister. She she really likes that stuff. And uh, family is very important to her. So she was very glad or very happy that everybody finally showed up. So it had been, God, it had been a long time since we'd all been together. So and, uh, anyway, so we did that on Saturday and Sunday on a uh, morning. And about noon on Sunday, I left and drove home. I got home about 10 o'clock Sunday night. And I've been... Sitting in the house, watching TV, being a lazy bum all weekend, 
Because it's been hot. You know, it's 100 and, I mean, it's not 100. It's 97 degrees yesterday, 94 the day before. It's just up in the upper 90s. And it's just, why? I just sit home and relax for a while. So, uh, but I need to get back out here and work on this bus. So now that the weather, you know, next Monday, Monday is supposed to be a cool front coming through. And it'll, it'll only be a high of 88. So I think that'll be a good day to start working on this bus. Uh, I got a whole bunch of things, a um, whole bunch of uh, uh, stuff right here. You see that right here, that black panel right there? Those are the solar panels. I got, uh, I got a, I'm gonna make a huge solar array. Uh, it's gonna be, uh, gosh, what was it? 3,200, I think. 410 watt panels times eight panels. 3280, 3280, but that's 3280 if they're pointing straight at the sun. I'm gonna mount them flat, so they'll never get 3280. The most they'll ever get is probably about 2600, 2500, somewhere in that range, because they'll be mounted flat. That's still a lot, and it's such a big system, I'm gonna split it in two separate, I'm gonna have basically two separate systems, uh, two identical systems, but two separate systems, okay? And I've got batteries. Uh, I've got, I bought uh, the uh, lithium batteries. I've got this great big, uh, they're like 8D, you know, the 8D size batteries. They're big, they're 300 amp hours a piece. I got four of them. That's a lot, that's a lot of storage. So this will be a rolling, a rolling power plant. I will be able to, I will probably be able to run air conditioner off of it during the day uh, when, when the sun's out and everything. Uh, run air conditioning on it, and as soon as the sun gets low in the sky, cut it off, and the batteries will still be mostly full, hopefully, and uh, uh, by, but by the time the sun's starting to go down, you don't need the air conditioner anymore, and you try to travel where the weather's not that hot. Maybe just run the air conditioner from noon to five or something like that. Anyway, uh, got all that, all the parts and pieces, most of it. I don't have the, the copper lugs and all that kind of stuff for making the battery cables. But I got battery cables, I got solar cables, I've got the char uh, the the battery cutoff switches, I've got fuses, I've got all that stuff. I've ordered all that stuff last week, it all came in, it's all, most of it's in the van. Uh, I got a, uh, after I get done with this video here, I'm gonna have to unload it all. And, uh, oh, I need to apologize, uh, Lisa. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I didn't, uh, I forgot my computers are at home. I don't have them with me out here. And I got out here and realized, oh, I forgot to put slow mode on for you. So I'm sorry, I'm very sorry about that. If it gets to be too big of a problem, um, uh, I don't know how long this video is gonna be. It's probably not gonna be terribly long. Here it does, give me a text and uh, I'll go ahead and shut off, you know, if it gets to be too, too hectic for you. But um, anyway, um, I'll try to, do better uh, cutting or uh, putting that uh, the limits on there. So uh, let's see what are some of the comments. Okay, North Star. There we go. Gray Wolf is in Colorado. He even got the heat on in his RV. Yeah, because it's cool everywhere else in the country. Everywhere but here. Everywhere but Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas is hot. Everywhere else is nice and cool. You know, I think it's cool in Arizona even. You know. Even if it is, it's let's say it's 90 degrees in Arizona. 90 degrees in Arizona is actually pretty comfortable. You know, it, it's not that bad because it's so dry and you just, you, as long as you stay in the shade, you're comfortable. All right. Uh, 49 degrees in South Carolina. Yep, there we go. I just talked to a friend of mine. He's up in Ohio and he says it's like 60 degrees up there. Just why can't I be in that? You know why? Why Texas? Why is it so stinking hot here all the time? And the funny thing is, it'll be 90, 90, 90, 90, and then all of a sudden we'll get a fall of about two weeks, and it'll be cold. You know, it just we don't get much of a fall here. It just it seems like as soon as it. You no, know, on the other hand, though, our winters are very mild. So I guess you know, in a way, our whole winter is like a fall to some blood, you know, like to Wisconsin or Ohio or Dakotas or something. So, um, 
yeah, we don't get the secretary. We get ice storms come down. It gets real cold for maybe a week and or four or five days, and then it warms right back up. Uh, we get we don't get much snow. We get a little one inch snow, a, a, a dusting of snow, and it's gone by noon. It's all melted. So, so we got pretty calm, pretty mild winters. So I guess we, I guess that's our fall. Our all winter long is our fall. I guess. Uh, hot, but not too hot in Idaho. There we go. 40 in West Virginia, 58 in Lodi, Ohio. Bought new new panels. I'll go over and show them to you. I'll show all that stuff to you here in just a second. As it sits, I have more solar, the solar panels and the batteries and all the paraphernalia that goes with it, the charge controllers, all the wiring and cabling and everything. That cost more than busted. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so you can buy a bus cheap. It's all that stuff you put on it that's expensive. So mainly the, the solar and the electronic stuff is what's expensive. Past that, your plywood is expensive, but you know, you don't put that much plywood in there. So, but yeah. Um, Oh, let's see. Where are we at? Uh, Pam's at home right now. She's still working. Uh, she's still on that 90-day extension. Uh, she retired in July 29th, July 28th, something like that. She retired. It was her last day, but they right before that, the last, the, what, last week uh, that she was working um, up in the office in Dallas, uh, they came to her and said, would you please stay on for another 90 days? We really need the help, you know. And she agreed for 90 more days. And now we get up to Halloween. So she got about another five weeks to go. Five weeks to go, and then she's she's done. She'll she'll run away. <laughs> and I don't know all her plans exact, but I believe she's gonna try to sell a house and then we're gonna go travel around in this thing. So in the next three months, I'm gonna build this thing up. She's gonna sell the house. We're gonna move into this thing and go travel for a while and see how that works. Come next spring, hopefully I'll get a call from uh, Milwaukee and they will uh, give me a tour and we can take the bus up there, park it, get in the pickup and go on a tour together maybe. And uh, the uh, the whole time I was gone, I was gone 28 days and I got one hotel. I slept in the pickup the whole time. I got one hotel um, uh, and that was over when I was in LA or down in California. And it's pretty hot. I got there like two in the afternoon. And I thought, you know, I don't mind spending money on a hotel if I'm going to use the hotel. But I cannot bring myself to spend $100, $120, $140, $160 for a hotel room when, oh yeah, there's cheaper ones. You know, a shitty old Motel 6 where you get bed bugs and, you know, <laughs> blood stains from a murder. <laughs> I just... I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that about Motel 6. But, you know, they're, they're not that nice hotels. They're, they're, they're budget. They're very cheap. And they're usually in a less desirable part of town. Toby, hello. Missed the train horns. Yep, they're still on the truck. They're still on the truck. So, ain't no air in the truck right now. I need, I need to start that thing up and let, let the batteries charge. So, but, uh, <laughs> thank you, Toby. <laughs> You know, Toby, hold on. I'm gonna go start that thing up and get some air pressure build up. Just for Toby.
<clears throat> All right, we'll let that idle for a little bit. Get the air pressure built up so Toby can get air horns. <laughs> uh, so anyway, let's see, what else? Um, <clears throat> uh, where was I at? What was I talking about? Um, Oh, hotels. Anyway, so I, 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 I got one hotel while I was out in California. The last day I had the trader uh, it was on uh, Sunday. Sunday out in uh, San Bernardino. Stopped at a hotel. And uh, they had security out in the parking lot because that trader and a pickup and they didn't want anything getting stolen or broken on in it, into it or whatever. So uh, they had on site security, a little rent a cop driving around in the parking lot. And uh, I went up and did a lot of it. I edited three, three or four videos that evening, sitting around the truck in, in the hotel. Um, a lot of these videos you've been watching here the, the, the last uh, last couple of weeks. So anyway, uh, edited a bunch of those videos, and, and I don't mind spending a ho money on a hotel if I'm going to use it. I have a real problem with driving down the highway all day because that's basically what I did on this tr this tour. I, I drove most of the time. And uh, when I got somewhere, uh, 10, 11 o'clock at night, all right, it's time to pull in and go to bed. I just have a hard time spending 150 bucks for a hotel to go in and go straight to sleep, wake up in the morning, take a shower, and head right back out again. You don't really use the hotel for anything. You know, as long as I can sleep, I don't. I can sleep on a park bench. I don't care. You know. So I got one hotel in the whole 28 days. So that saved me a bunch of money. Um, I, uh, I got a, uh, took the, the back seats of a Ford pickup. The, the, the seat part flips back up against the back wall. So the whole floor area is wide open. Uh, and there's no transmission hump in the back seat of a Ford pickup, uh, a, a, a four door. Uh, the transmission hump comes back right under the center of the front seat and everything. But, by the time it gets past that, the floor is nice and flat because there's no transmission there. And uh, it was relatively flat. So I got a, a, a mattress pad, a four inch thick memory foam mattress pad, uh, trimmed it down small enough to fit on the floor where it wouldn't be all wadded up because it's too big, you have to trim it down. And I got a, a real cheap sleeping bag, real cheap, cheapest one I could find at Walmart, it's like 19 bucks. And unzipped the sleeping bag, turned it inside out and stuffed that, uh, foam down inside the, the sleeping bag and zipped it back up and basically made a, a little mattress out of it. That was quite comfortable. I was surprised how comfortable that thing was. Uh, it's only four inches thick. You'd think you know, it'd be, you know, uh, you'd be getting hard spots like on your hip when you're laying sideways or something. There's so much weight there. It's pushing and flattening, you know, squishing the mattress all the way flat, but it actually did pretty good. And uh, uh, so that's one of the ways I slept. And it's, it's a big difference going from that big sleeper with an apartment and shower and all nine yards going to the back seat of the pickup. But this job pays enough, it's, it's worth it. You know, it's, it's worth putting up with that. Uh, they pay enough to, be, to get hotels, but I just soon leave that money in my pocket and uh, just sleep in the back seat of the pickup. So I did that all, every night except uh, when I went to the UP. I slept in the van. Every, every time I was up in Wisconsin, I slept in the van instead of the pickup. Uh, uh, so out of the 20, 22 days of actual running, I probably only slept in the van or the pickup about 18 days, I guess. Something like 18 nights, some, something like that. So anyway, that's... Uh, what I've been doing, I guess. So that's over with. Hopefully next spring I'll get another tour. They're talking about a, a automotive tour. Uh, they're, they're, I don't know. They, they, they hear about a lot of different things. And the problem, remember when I first told you about that company, they were gonna dip, put me on a, a tractor, a New Holland tractor. They were gonna put me on that tour. And uh, I was really looking forward to that. That was gonna be about a four month tour. And they started out, they wanted five vehicles, five trucks and trailers pulling all their different, you know, their different lineup of tractors, everything from little garden tractors up to large tractors. And then they changed, now that's going to be too expensive, they just go to three trucks. And that's when they called me and said, hey, would you like to do one of those? And I'm like, sure, let's do one of those. And that's when I first told you about this company. 
<laughs> well, then about two weeks later, uh, I called them. I haven't heard from them in a little while. I called them and I said, oh, yeah, they, they're, uh, they're not going to be able to do that tour. I'm like, oh, well, why not? He said, well, they, they went from three trucks down to one. And the way they were going to do is three trucks. There was going to be two of them in the United States and one of them up in Canada. Truck And that one truck was going to do every show all the way in America and up in, in Canada. And I can't tell you we're back. Why it does that, I have no idea. I have no idea. It just, I got a good signal. I, I don't get it. So, anyway. So, let's see, where was I before I got rudely interrupted? <laughs> um, so, anyway, let's see here. Uh, trying to think what else. Um, forget. I, uh, where was I? I don't remember what I was talking about now. Uh, anyway, go to uh, uh, what was it? Went to. Um, I don't think she's ready. The, the bull's out there sniffing the old cow. The, the, the mama that just had a calf, he's out there sniffing her. I, I don't think she's ready yet, dude. <laughs> I don't think she's ready yet. Anyway, uh, what else can I talk about? I mean, let me think, let me think, let me think. Let me scroll down through some, some comments here, I suppose. I was hauling about, oh, hauling the tractors. Thank you, thank you, Bradley. Um, I was hauling those tractors, and uh, anyway, the idea was they, they they decided no, they're not gonna they're not gonna do that tour at all. So that whole tour just you know fell apart. They ended up uh, found out that uh, New Holland they went with a different company that does this stuff too, you know, a, a similar company, and they went with them instead. Um, probably prices or something, I don't know. And I was talking to one of the guys up there, that was one of the head honchos and everything, not the owner, but one of the guys. Uh, higher up. I was talking to him one day and he said that happens a lot. They, they, they put a bid in and they got to start looking for a driver as soon as the the, 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 the client comes in and says, hey, we want to uh, do such and such. And they throw them a price and they go, yeah, I think that sounds pretty good, but they haven't signed a contract yet. But they need to go out and start getting drivers lined up, you know. So they, they you know, they, they call me or something and say, hey, you want to do this? And I'm like, sure, I'll do that. And then the, the, the client at the last minute can back out, I guess. I, I don't know how that all works. But, but they said that's not the first time it's happened. So, yeah, be, you got to be, uh, what do you call it, mentally prepared for that. that you just never know. They if they might pull the rug out right underneath you. You just never know. So, we're, um, but yeah, they, they do uh, stuff for NASCAR. They do stuff for the NFL. They do stuff for a, a whole bunch of different things. Um, and one of the ones I'm kind of interested in, supposedly next year, is what uh, Matt was doing on his tour. Uh, he did that tour with uh, 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 Range Rover. Uh, he did a tour with Range Rover, and he uh, it worked out pretty well with him. So uh, he was talking to the people that he was involved with in that tour, and they said, yeah, we're more than likely going to do some more next year. Uh, Range Rover, uh, Jaguar, uh, BMW, uh, even Cadillac maybe. Um, so it would be something along the lines of maybe Cadillac has their new uh, electric car, their electric Cadillac of some type, electric SUV maybe or something. And you'd haul that around to dealers and the dealers get to look at it, you know, um, I guess the truck. The one they were dragging around, I think, was a 2024 model, and they're like prototypes. They're not even in production or anything yet, but it's still that far out. And uh, they take it around and get feedback from salesmen and you know uh, the dealership owners and things like that. And uh, apparently, the, the the SUV that they drug around, uh, there were three of them in the country. Uh, Matt had one, another guy had one. On, Matt had the West Coast, another one had the East Coast. And I don't know what the third one was used for. But anyway, uh, they'll eventually ship them back to, to England. 
and uh, put them through a crusher and uh, tear them all up because they're not they're not a uh, certified or what, what do you call it uh, legal car. They they can't be legally uh, driven. I don't think they, they don't have VIN numbers, things like that. You know, they they don't they don't have working airbags because it's just sitting. It's a show truck or a show car. So uh, he said the one he had, the electric windows didn't work. There was no motors in in the door. They basically build it up, make it look, see what you think about it. But there's a lot of things that aren't working. You know, so <clears throat> so anyway, those cars can never be sold, so they just end up crushing them. Uh, no different than you know they probably built. 20 of those and the others are being put through the crash tests and things like that you know? so that's what the first batch of cars are, are used for and they, they can't sell them so they, they end up you know disassembling them, throwing them away trashing them all just crushing them whatever so but the, they said some of the ones that are just dis, display cars they don't even have a motor or transmission in them <laughs> oh okay so this one did it had a motor and you know it, you could drive it but not legally on the street or anything so he pulled out of the park out of the trailer into the parking the, the showroom and then from the showroom back into the trailer and never never saw the street but it went on his his tour went on for about three and a half months so he made a pretty good little uh, 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 pretty good little payroll on that and uh, so yeah, uh, that's what I'm hoping to do next next spring is do some kind of a uh, a tour, uh, doing that kind of stuff. Um, and when, if Pam goes along, we'll uh, uh, get hotels every night and all that kind of stuff. So so anyway, that's what that's all about. Uh, 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 that's kind of where we're at. We're I'm gonna work on the bus the rest of the year. Pam's gonna finish out her job and then work on getting our house ready to sell and uh, we'll be rolling probably January heading out to Arizona for for the rest of the winter uh, come springtime hopefully they'll call me and say hey we've got a tour you want to go on it sure I'll do that and uh, we'll prepare for that and maybe that'll go on for three or four months during the spring fall spring and summer of next year uh, after that's over get in the bus take off and go up to Montana or someplace for the, the heat of the summer and then come winter time, come back down here for Christmas and all that. So I just kind of play it one day at a time kind of thing. But, but uh, like I said, with the semi and all that, just sell while the iron's hot, I think. I, uh, I don't know. Uh, what else? Anything else y'all want to talk about? I'll go ahead and wrap this up maybe. But let's see. Uh, said it depends on... Brenda's answer, uh, uh, Dory, Dory asked a question and Brenda didn't answer that, but yeah, basically I didn't have, I had to, I, I drove the pickup because I have CDL and all that, and for some reason, the law says the uh, pickup had to have a CDL driver in it, but the RV didn't, so I don't know, didn't have, the RV didn't have to do anything, uh, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, sell in the summer, don't know yet, Don, maybe. And what's the worst that can happen? I sell the semi, I put the money in the bank, it just sits there, and uh, uh, a year, two years from now, I decide to go back to trucking or something, I can always just go buy another truck. It's not that big a deal, you know. Uh, uh. That's my sister sending me a text message about my uncle. I've got an uncle that's going into surgery on Tuesday, I think she said. So he's got oral oral cancer in his jaw. So send a prayer for him, okay? So, uh, what else? Um, I let me show you the uh, the equipment that I bought. Okay, go ahead and do that. Here's the solar panels over here. I brought them in and uh, leaned them up against the uh, thing here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 410 watt solar panels. Um, the company, the 
are what they call half cells, which is a new thing to me. But there's the, uh, is that good enough for you? Oh, that's backwards, ain't it? Is that backwards? Yeah, that's backwards. Uh, let me see, I gotta turn this around for you. Hold on. The lettering was backwards. There we go. Solar Ever is the name of the company. And that's all the uh, information on them. But they're, uh, they're 410 watt solar panels and there's eight of them. So there's a lot, a lot of juice there. I'll come out here to the van. There's the old girl. So we got one, two, three, four um, uh, ampere time lithium batteries. They're 300, and 300 uh, amp hours a piece. That's 1,200 amp hours. Um, there's a Victron solar charger, 150, 100s. I got two of them. Like I said, I'm going to put four panels on this one and four panels on this one. It'd be two, two to completely separate systems. But they'll all they'll, they'll tie in and charge all the batteries. Okay. Uh, here's the cables I made for or got for the batteries. Look at them old honkers, big old suckers. Uh, big old battery cables. All right. Here's the solar cables that'll go upstairs. There's uh, the Y connectors. There's some fuses. I got more stuff in other boxes over there. Got my switches. <clears throat> I got things like switches here. Uh, oh, shoot, where are they? Yeah, I just have to open one up. These are the battery cutoff switches. Okay, you know, you just turn the turn the knob here. That's on, and that's off, on, off. It's just a battery disconnect is all that is. Uh, I got this, that's a little meter. Um, there's a fuse kit, yeah. The 100 amp hour fuse, or 100 amp uh, fuse. Um, try not to lose anything while I'm showing this stuff to you real fast. Um, here's the uh, shunt. Uh, I think I got too big of a shunt, but rather too big than too small. Look at this old honker. That thing is huge. And the shunt is what tells you how much electricity goes in and out of your batteries. It's a, basically a meter. Think of, a, think of that shunt. Turn you around here. Think of that shunt as the, uh, you know when your, your power company your power company comes in from the from the road, the power lines, they come over and there's a uh, transformer up on the telephone pole and it comes over here and on the side they've got the meter it shows how much electricity is going in and out, you know, or we're going in, um, so they can meter. A shunt does something very similar to that when you, uh, uh, get you out here. Well, get back here. So what happens, a shunt is basically like that meter, but it's both ways, okay? I guess the meter does the same thing. If you got solar on the building and you're, you're, you're creating more solar than you're bringing in from the grid, uh, you pump the solar back through the grid, your meter will actually run backwards. So anyway, um, the uh, shunt does kind of the same thing. It, it just monitors how much electricity is coming in and out of the uh, system. So you have the solar panels up there, you got your charge controllers, everything comes over. Here's the cable going over to the battery, okay? In that cable, you put that shunt, okay? And every all the electricity that goes into the battery gets calculated, and all the electricity that's coming back out of the battery gets calculated. So it, it, it tells you what your, it's like a fuel gauge. It'll tell you how full your, your batteries are, all right? so. All right, so we got that stuff down. All right, let's go out here and do it for Toby.
Yeah, it rings loud. <laughs> Rattles your eardrums. So there you go, Toby. You got the air horns. I don't want to blow them too much, my neighbors and stuff. So, oh mercy. Ugh. Go back and sit down. Um, oh, right here, these big white boxes or gray box or brown boxes. I mean, that's all my water tanks. Um, I have decided. If you remember, I had talked about taking my van and disassembling it, okay? And the idea behind that was if I take the van, uh, why is the screen so dark? You guys watching, okay, it's still working. My screen went dim. Uh, um, when I first bought the van, the bus, I, I had the idea of uh, nobody's going to want to sell, buy that bus or that van because it's probably going to be too expensive. Uh, it has a lot of money wrapped up in that, that, that van, the Ford van. And uh, another thing is you take a, a homemade camper van, a home-built camper van into a dealer. They don't want it. They don't want the liability in case something's wrong and the thing burns up or shocks somebody or something. Something goes wrong. They don't want the liability uh, involved with it. So what they'll do is they, they, they'll, they'll buy the van, but not as the camper van. They want you to take all that crap out. So I had the idea, I'd take all the solar panels off and I'd take the, you know, the water tank, the water pump, and you know, the heater and all the, all the different things, all the components that were in it. Take all that stuff out and put it in the bu bus. Well, the more I got to thinking about that, uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and keep the van the way it is, okay? Um, I was gonna put, the reason I brought that up is the, the three water tanks. Um, there's 65 gallon water tanks. And I was gonna put four of them. Those three plus the one in the van was gonna go, all four of them were gonna go in the, in the bus. The more I thought about it, you know, that, that, bus, that van's well built, you know, and um, somebody, somewhere, somebody will end up wanting to buy it, okay? So uh, instead of tearing it apart and, um, and whatnot, um, I'll probably put it up for sale too, somewhere down the line. I don't know when. But as of right now, I'm just gonna hold on to the van and leave it as it is and uh, see what happens with that. Uh, in the meantime, um, I was gonna sell the van in December and buy a Jeep. I was gonna buy a Jeep uh, uh, Gladiator, that new pickup. And I thought if I, if I could do all that and everything, but um, Pam's got a perfectly good car, so I think I might just buy a trader, just a two or three thousand dollar trader, put her car on a trader, and pull it around instead, instead of a sixty thousand dollar Jeep. Okay, and uh, she'll like that because she likes her car, and um, so we'll probably do that, and then later on maybe adjust and change or whatever. That that'll leave it to where she has her car that she likes to drive and is comfortable in and everything. And uh, so I think I'll just do that. Um, in the meantime, I'll keep the van and uh, probably put it up for sale um, along with the bus and probably end up, the, the, not the bus, the uh, truck. The truck and the van both get sold and all that money just gets put in the bank. And uh, uh, all I'll have is be the bus and then Pam will have her car and together we can motivate around the country. So with that, uh, things getting aggravating. <clears throat> anyway, all right. So, uh, but yeah, I guess we're gonna. This this phone keeps shutting off for some reason. I I don't get it. I don't know why it does it. But anyway, um. <clears throat> so yeah, I think that's the plan. Is just to. Uh, Maybe sell everything, sell sell the truck and the, and the van and everything, and then, uh, uh, but sell it as a RV van. Hopefully, get somebody to buy it, and then, uh, uh, and just have the van, the the, the bus and, and and Pam's car. So anyway, good enough, I guess. Uh, here we go. Yeah, see you at courtside. Yep, we'll be out there at courtside. Uh, let me read some of the comments here real quick. 
It's all good. Yep, one hour exactly the phone freezes. Yeah, it's not exactly one hour. It's th three times now. And I don't know why it does it. It's it's not hot. The phone's not hot or anything like that. So, I, I don't know. I, it baffles me. Yeah, it's not over. The phone's not hot. I'm, I'm touching it right now, and it's not hot. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why, why it, the, the, the phone. Gray Wolf is setting himself on fire for freedom and liberty. Watch him on YouTube. Check what? All right, I'm gonna have to call. I'm gonna have to call Gray Wolf and find out what's going on. I'll do that some other time. Um, find out what that's all about. Uh, the Wheel of Doom. I don't know what that means. Yeah, camera doesn't like my pipe. There you go. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, the new Wrangler and the Jeep, the, they're all, everything's overpriced right now. That's why I sell them. Sell them while the price is up, you know. Uh, and wait later on, maybe the prices will come back down a little bit. So, but, uh, uh, he's going to set himself on fire tomorrow. I better call him today then. <laughs> Once I get off this stream, I'm, I'm going to call him and find out what's going on. <laughs> Great wolf. Gonna set himself on fire, huh? Okay. I don't know. I'm sure there's I'm sure there's some joke or something to that. I I can't see him actually lighting himself on fire. Uh, let's see. There's my horn. Yeah, you already got the horn there, Toby. Yep. I didn't do live streams while I was on that tour because uh, for one, it's too busy. Um, and I did that one live stream when the wheel fell off in Albuquerque. But other than that, I just did uh, edited videos and put them up. And I, like I said, I still got three more of those. So don't get confused, folks. Don't get confused. Um, uh, I still got three more videos that are going to show uh, up in, in um, the Michigan's UP. Uh, those were filmed two weeks ago, okay? Uh, those those were from, filmed over Labor Day weekend. So, um, <clears throat> and it takes you a while to edit and, and put them all up and everything. So, but yeah, I, uh, yeah, remember live streams are immediate and edited videos are from in the past, okay? So uh, don't send me a whole bunch of, I thought you were in Texas. Oh, wait a minute, I, hold on. How can you be in Texas and, and the UP at the same time? Magic. Magic, folks. Uh, I'm just talented that way. Let's see. Uh, Monday's video is going to be, um, I don't know if it's good or not. I put a lot of, a lot of time editing the video. Um, uh, to Thursdays, Thursdays video, week week from today, or week from yesterday, six days from now, that video is going to be pretty good. On the, uh, I meet up with a guy up there in, in the UP, a uh, guy I met at a court site, and uh, met up, he'll go over to his, his uh, he has an off-grid, an off-grid uh, compound, so to say. So we go and visit with him, and uh we we'll do a little cooking that day too, you know, a little bit of a cooking show. So, anyway, with that, I don't know. I, uh, I'm just rambling now. So, but anyway, the next few, uh, next Monday, next Thursday, and then the following Monday, we got three more videos from the UP. Um, today's Friday. I will probably do a live stream, maybe Sunday or Monday. I don't know. I'll be out here working on the bus. 
uh, probably Monday, since Monday's supposed to be fairly cool, okay? So I might do a live stream. And the funny thing is, I'll be, I have a, a, you, uh, I have a, a live stream from Texas and a video from Michigan all on the same day. That'll really screw some people up. Going, what? How in the hell does that happen? <laughs> yeah, magic of Hollywood. Hollywood magic, folks. Oh, John. What? It's the Democrats cutting you off because uh, you aren't wearing a mask. <laughs> yeah, if I wore a mask, maybe the, the maybe Biden's cutting me off because, no, uh, Fauci. Fauci's cutting me off because I'm not wearing a mask. I'm sorry. Oh, apparently a couple days ago, uh, Fauci finally admitted that all the, all the stupid shit they was, he was having everybody do. Uh, <clears throat> for instance, Put a mask on to go up and get in, walk into a restaurant. But once you get in the restaurant and you sit down at the table, you can take the mask off. Just, ugh, just gives my brain a headache trend, just thinking about that. Just, just, you know. And he finally admitted that was kind of dumb. Really? You think so? You know, it's just, gee, what can we do? What can we tell them to do and see how stupid they are and they'll follow along and do it? You know? And it's just, uh, I'm, I'm still, I'm still of the opinion that whole thing was designed to get people to, just like training a dog, just like training a dog, you, you, you tell them to do something. If they do it, great. You reward them. If they don't, then you don't, you know, and uh, it, it, it was just training the American public to do whatever they just, whatever stupid thing they come up with. Hey, let's see if they'll do it. And if they do it, hey, we know we've got them. You know, we can we can tell them to do stupid shit all the time. Uh, uh, this, this world is so upside down right now. Still keep thinking back to that time when uh, the movie uh, Castaway. Remember the Tom Hanks Castaway movie? <clears throat> and I'm sitting there explaining this movie. I had a friend of mine, we were sitting there talking. I was oh, I kind of like on Tom Hanks on the castaway and everything. And he goes, oh, I've never seen it. So, oh, you haven't? Well, I thought everybody's seen that movie. He goes, no, I've never seen it. So I was explaining it to him and everything. And while I was explaining it to him, it dawned on me. Why did he want off that island? Really, I mean, why did he want off that island? He had it made. I mean, people pay really good money to go find an island like that to get away. To, to escape from shit, you know? They go on vacations, they go find a little island like that to, to unwind and, and if he'd have just had a hatchet and a Bic lighter, <laughs> it just made his life so much easier. But uh, why did he want off that island? I just never quite understood that because I mean, he, he, he gets to go fishing every day. He doesn't, he doesn't have an old lady barking at him. Yeah, do this, do this, do this, take the trash out, you know? And, you know, you're no good bum, you know, get off the couch and go do something, you know, whatever. You don't you don't have a, a your 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 old lady hollering and screaming at you. Uh, you get to go fishing every day. Uh, he he eats seafood, lobster, stuff like that every day. Uh, didn't have to take the trash out. <laughs> didn't have to uh, didn't have to pay bills. Didn't have uh, didn't have a mortgage. You know, didn't have to change oil in his car. <laughs> oh, he, he had it made. Why did he want off that island? I don't know. Oh well. Oh, and then you come back and uh, Tom Hanks. He comes back off the island. He comes home and he starts watching the news. And Fauci's telling him to wear a mask in a restaurant. But you don't have to wear it when you're in the restaurant. You got to wear it to walk through the door. But you don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to wear one when you're sitting down and talking. You know. <laughs> Just. Uh, lunacy. lunacy. Absolute lunacy. I, I, I'm just. I'm convinced they just did it to see if they could get us. To see what we can. See what we can push on to see what they'll actually do. See which ones are sheeple and go. Yep, that's a great idea. I better put a mask on. And other people like you know. Oh, the ones that won't put a mask on, they're a danger to society. We need to. They're 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 radicals. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, enough bitching. 
All right, folks, I'm, my pipe's about empty and my coffee's about empty, so time to, time to shut the video off, I guess. So y'all be good, take care, we will see you. I don't know, maybe Monday, something like that. I'm not sure what day, but we're back into the live streams, I guess, while I'm gonna be building this bus. So um, I got three more UP videos, and then after that's all live streams. So y'all be good, take care, and enjoy, and God bless, and, and uh, uh, has it all uh, Red Green used to say, keep your stick off, you guys. We're rooting for you. <laughs> y'all be good, take care, bye-bye.